Tonight I want to start into a series that I've called an overview of the Bible from Genesis to Revelation. And this would be a, a, a study for beginners. I think the kids should get something out of it. And I hope that everybody gets something out of it, even though most of this stuff you know. Some of the things you won't know, some of the details of when the books of the Bible were written and things like that. But a lot of this is just going to be very basic information. But sometimes it's just good to go over the basics again and remind you of things that you already know, as we're told a couple times in the Bible, that I will therefore put you in remembrance of these things, though you once knew them. Uh, Jude tells us that. Many of us grew up believing the Bible. We grew up as uh, some type of professing Christians, and we take a lot of this information for granted. That we, we all know it. We know what the Bible is. We know what the books are. But there are literally billions of people in this world who don't know that. They don't know the first thing about the Bible. Many Muslims, uh, Hindus, Buddhists, people like that. So what I want to do is I want to try to take nothing for granted in this study and just go over and cover the very basics of what is the Bible and go through and just talk about some of the, the major things that happen in the Bible, the characters and the events and what the books are and who they were written by and who they were written to and things like that. So first of all, what is the Bible? <clears throat> Does anybody know what the word Bible means? Anybody know what a Bible is? It means little books. So this, this book that we have in front of us, the Bible, is made up of a bunch of books. Anybody know how many books there are in the Bible? Ten. More than ten. Anybody else? No? 66. No. Sixty-six. Good. Very good. There are sixty-six books. They were written by about 40 different authors over the period of about 1,600 years. And yet there's no contradiction in this book. And so that's, if you think about it, if you wrote a book, and sometimes people co-author books, yeah. right? Imagine co-authoring a book with 39 other people and then on different parts of the world scattered over 1,600 years. And would you have a book that would be coherent and without contradiction? No, of course not. You'd be lucky to co-author a book with one person that's of like mind with you, that's your next door neighbor at the same time, and not have contradictions in it. So that alone speaks to right, um, the veracity of the Bible. The Bible was written over a period from about 1500 B.C. until about 90 A.D. Who knows what B.C. stands for? Anybody? You know what B.C. stands for? 1500 B.C. It's before before Christ. So that means before Jesus came. So whenever, you, whenever a date is B.C., that means it was before Jesus was born in roughly zero, the year zero. And until about 90 A.D., what does A.D. stand for? This one's a little bit more difficult. James, you're a Latin student. After that. But, no. no, I'm sorry. It, well, after death is an easy way to remember it, but it actually doesn't, it doesn't mean after death. It is a Latin phrase, uh, anno domini, is yep. that it? Anno domini? Yep. yep. Which means in the year of our Lord, right? Anno would be year, right? Oh, okay, anno, year, domini. Lord, domination. Domination, yep. There you go. change those now? Yeah. Yeah. It's not BC. Yep. It's still AD, I think. No, it's, uh, no, it's uh, CE. Common era. Oh, yep. CE, BCE, sorry. before the common era, CE, common era. Yep. Mm -hmm. They have to get, they want to get Christ out of everything. They've already taken him out of Christmas. No, just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> he was never in Christmas to start Amen. with. Okay, so the Bible was written by men who are under the inspiration of God. Uh, turn with me to Second Peter 1 and verse 21. I'm actually gonna, not going to have a lot of scripture reading in this study because we're just really covering a big picture mile high view of the Bible and just hitting the major points but I do have a few of them in here in 2nd Peter 1 in verse 21 it says for the prophecy came not in old time by the will of man but holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost so this is how the Bible was given to us the Holy Ghost which is the, set, the third person of the Trinity of who our God is he moved men 
to write to speak these things and to write them down. So, and when it says that they were moved by the Holy Ghost, I literally believe in mechanical dictation, where he moved their hands to write what he wanted them to write. Other scholars out there would disagree, but I don't really care what they say anyway. Look at 2 Timothy 3 and verse 16. This verse tells us that the scripture is given by the inspiration of God. 2 Timothy 3.16 says, All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. So if something is called scripture, it was given by the inspiration of God. God inspired it. Inspiration means God breathed. The, the, the moving force behind the scripture was God himself. These are God's words. This is why we call the Bible the Word of God, because it is God's words. The Bible is divided into two major sections. Who knows what those sections are? Anybody? What, two, what are the two sections of the Bible, the, the major sections? Sections? Old time and the new time? Old Testament and yeah, New and Testament. Testament. That's right. Those are the two major sections. Which one's bigger? New Testament. Nope. Not the old. The old. old. The Old Testament's bigger. The Old Testament has 39 books in it, and the New Testament has 27 books in it. And a lot of the Old Testament books are longer than the New Testament books. So if you look, if I just divide it here at Matthew, we'll see the difference. So here we go. Now my Bible has a bunch of stuff after Revelation, which irritates some people. Amen. So here, here's the New Testament right here. See, there's about, what, a half inch thick? And then here's the Old Testament. See, look at that. See here's the difference. Look at the difference there. Yeah. So the, the Old Testament looks like it's about three times as big as the New Testament. Now, the Old Testament is divided up into three major sections itself. Who knows what those three sections are called? Anybody? What? Three major sections of the Old Testament. Anybody know what those are? The law. Mm-hmm. The prophets. Yep. I don't want to take all the answers. Anyway. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Especially when you can't remember the third yeah. one. Oh, you <laughs> little faith. The law, the prophets, <laughs> and the kings. No. The, oh. the Psalms. Psalms. Or the writings. Right. So, yeah, they, um, the Hebrew Old Testament was broken up into those three sections. Our Old Testament is, the books are in, in a little bit different order, so they're roughly broken up into those three sections, too, though some of the, some of the writings would be in the, in the prophets. For instance, Daniel was in the writings. In oh. the, yeah, which I don't know. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of prophecy in Daniel, but that was part of the writings in the Old Testament. Pastor, when, when it says in First Peter, that first verse, that the prophecy came, mm-hmm. and, and um, prophecy in its primary definition, I think, is a divine utterance. Divinely inspired utterance. Divinely yeah. inspired utterance. So that's yeah. not just prophecy. It's like, well, this right. whole book is prophecy in a way, right. too. But. Well, it, yeah, it's not just foretelling a future events, yes. like we think of prophecy. Prophecy is anything, any words that come from God. Yeah. So, so this book came from God's words. It's yes. divine utterance. Yep, that's right. Thank yep. You. Pastor? Yeah. Um, I'm, so, the Pentateuch, could you please, is that just with the Jewish Bible? Is that what the Pentateuch is, is in the Jewish Bible? The Pentateuch is the first five books of so the Old Testament. So we could describe this Bible as having a Pentateuch, right? Yeah, you could. That's the, Pentateuch means... Um, well, five something, I don't know, Penta, like Pentagon. No, yeah, five, yeah. That. I was just so, yeah, our Bible has, you could say it has a Pentateuch in it. Right. Yeah, the. Because Je- I've seen that word before, I just wasn't yeah. really sure what religion is. But it's, mm-hmm. okay. Yeah, it comes, I believe it comes from the Hebrew, the Hebrew Bible. That's the term for the, fir- for the law of Moses, the first five books. Okay. Yep, Genesis through Deuteronomy. So we get the law, which in our Bible would be Genesis through Deuteronomy, which is the Pentateuch, like you're talking about. You get the Psalms of the Writings, which would be Joshua through the Song of Solomon in our Bible, and the Prophets, which would be Isaiah through Malachi. So that's roughly the three divisions there. 
The Old Testament was written during a period between approximately 1533 B.C. to about 400 B.C. 1533 was when Israel came out of Egypt, and that's when the law was given to Moses. Some of these dates, I, I'm, some of these I, I put approximately, some of them I just state this book was written at, at this year. Just kind of take any of these dates with somewhat of a grain of salt. I mean, I'm not, don't hold me to the exact year. But, um, some of these I'm pretty confident on. I w- went through the um, Wonders of Bible Chronology book, Philip Morrow's book again. And he, that's a great little book, for, especially for finding dates. He has nice tables in there. And, and it's, just, it's a joy to read, too. You think chronology sounds so boring, but um, it's a good book. So I went through there, and I, I found a lot of the dates for the Old Testament in there based on what king was reigning or different events. Here, So some of these are pretty good. Some of the, uh, some of the dates, the New Testament, when they were written, the dates aren't, they're not solid. As, I mean, they're within a decade maybe or something, but you know, they're not going to be perfect. So, the Old Testament, 1533 to 400 B.C., and it covers world history from the creation, which would be 4000 B.C., from when God created the heaven and the earth, to about 400 B.C. So, it was written back in the 15, from the 1500s B.C. up to the 400s, but it covers a span of time where it discusses things the whole way back 4000 B.C., or 6000 years ago. The Old Testament is not entirely laid out in chronological order, though a lot of it is, but all of it is not. So you're not, when you read through, when you start in Genesis and you go to Malachi, you're not necessarily going to be following chronological order the whole way through. Through a lot of it, up, up through probably the book of Nehemiah and Ezra, it's pretty well chronological up until that point. And then once you get into Job, Job would go back a long ways. Um, the Psalms, the Proverbs, that's not chronological. And then the prophets are not chronological. And I'll, I will give you the dates when the prophets were written. And um, we'll see some of the prophets were contemporaries, but they're not, I don't know why they're not laid out in the times that they were written in order. But anyway, the New Testament has, four, I, I'm going to say, four major sections. Now, I'm saying four major sections. That's how I've broken it up. I don't know if other people would break it up into the same sections, but who has some ideas of the four major sections of the New Testament? Uh, the, the four Gospels. Yep. Mm-hmm. That's Gospel. one. Yep. Uh, Paul's letters. Is that another section? The epistles. Yep. The epistles. I put all the epistles, so Paul, Peter, James, all the epistles. And then what else? Acts and Revelation. Very good. Very good. So the sections, that's what I, that's what I say anyway. Great minds think um, alike, Yeah, that's right, and so do ours. That's right. Uh, so, yeah, the sections, I mean, you, two of the sections only have one book in them, but, but that's okay. And that really breaks it down where the Gospels, and we'll talk about this later, but the Gospels cover the life of Christ. The Acts of the Apostles cover just that, the Acts of the Apostles, where they went throughout all the world and they preached the Gospel. And then the Epistles are letters that were written to the churches, or to individuals, or to preachers, and then Revelation covers future events, mostly. The New Testament was written during a period of approximately 48 A.D. to 90 A.D. Like I said, these dates are are rough, but 40s, somewhere in there, to probably 90s. Some people think, uh, skeptics would say it was written way later. I was reading in the, I did quite a bit of reading in the International Bible, International Standard Bible Bible Encyclopedia, which I just got a paper copy of, actually, at Half Price Books the other day. But I was reading on the online, or on my computer version, it was easier. $50. Pretty good deal, yeah. I I didn't want to spend that much for it, but uh, I looked it up on Amazon, the cheapest thing you get was 80-something, and I figured, I tried to, yeah, not a politically incorrect term, but I tried to Jew them down, but um, (laughs) it didn't work. But anyway... Still, four volumes for 50 bucks. I mean, yeah. that's not a bad it's deal. A good deal to have yeah. Copies. So, I like to get paper copies of things because you just never know. I mean, something, EMP bomb or something, and we lose all electronics. I've got everything I need to do my job. I've got a Bible. I've got a concordance. I've got encyclopedia. I don't need it very often, but anyway. So, it's good to have that stuff on paper copies. 
So uh, the, now the New Testament would cover events from about 2 BC and the birth of Christ until about 70 AD. And then, of course, it prophesies of events the whole way to the end of time. We'll talk about the New Testament later. So let's go through an overview of the Old Testament and its major characters and events. And I don't know if we'll get, probably won't get through all of the Old Testament today. It just depends on how much I want to talk about all these things, because I could be very brief or we could get into all kinds of stuff. So first of all, the law. The law is Genesis to Deuteronomy, the first five books of the Bible. So when Jesus would refer to the law or the law of Moses, he's referring to Genesis to Deuteronomy. Sometimes, as we did see in the study that we did on the Old Testament a while back, the whole Old Testament Bible can be called the law. Right. So sometimes it is referred to as the law, but precisely the law was the law was what actually, what Moses himself wrote. Is sometimes the whole Old Testament called Moses? Well, the law of Moses is called Moses, so I guess you could say, yeah. In that the I don't know if the if the Old Testament specifically is called Moses. Okay. I don't know about that. Um, but the law of Moses is called Moses, and the whole Old Testament is referred to as the law, so you could okay. extrapolate that out from that, I suppose. So the law was written by a man named no Moses. Now we'll get into who Moses was later. Like I said, I'm trying to assume nothing here. I'm trying to assume like you don't even know who Moses was. So it was written by a guy named Moses, and it covers a period from the creation of the world, which is about 4,000 B.C., or about 6,000 years ago, to the death of Moses, which was in approximately 1494 B.C. We're going to talk about Moses in a little bit later. So the first book is the book of Genesis. Genesis, I believe, means beginnings, right? So think of the, the word genes or, gen or genus or something, which is the, the, the first thing you know, that everything else comes from. Yes. So the book of Genesis was written by Moses between 1533 and 1494 B.C. 1533 was when Israel came out of Egypt and started into the Promised Land or toward the, toward the Promised Land. Now with B.C. dates, they go in the opposite direction. So the, the, the larger the number gets on B.C. dates, the longer ago it was. So with A.D. dates, if we say 1900 or 1800, 19, 1800 was longer ago than 1900, right? This dog. But with BC numbers, it goes the other way. So if you're dealing with 1800 BC or 1900 BC, 1900 BC was longer ago than 1800 BC, right? Because we're starting at zero. Think of BC as negative numbers. Right? So when you start at zero and you go negative, the larger the number gets, the lower the number is. Right? It's like you're digging a hole. You know, your hole, your ground level is zero, and when you climb up the ladder, you're going AD. When you go dig down and down further, the farther you go, you're going BC. I don't know if that helped or not, but anyway. It helped and hurt. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, uh, so let's. I want to go through some of the events in Genesis. There's a lot of things that happen in Genesis, um, a, a whole lot of things. And I'm including the events in this study that are necessary to see the progression um, of basically all the history that's given in the Bible. So I'm not going to cover every little jot and tittle detail, but I am going to cover enough so that we can go from one thing to the next thing to the next thing and build it up the whole way until uh, we get to Christ and the Apostles. So Genesis 1-2 records the creation of the universe, the earth, and all life therein, and it culminates in the creation of man and woman, which was Adam and Eve, the first man and woman. So that's what's covered in Genesis 1 and 2. Um, very important information, obviously. This is, tells us how we got here. And it says in Genesis 1-1, in the beginning God created the heaven and the earth. And then it goes through and it shows that God created light and that God created the, the oceans and the dry land and the plants and animal, the plants and then the, the sun and the moon and the stars and then the water animals and the animals that, birds that fly in the sky and then he created the land animals and he created man on the sixth day. Now, everything was created in six 
literal days, 24-hour days, and then God rested on the seventh day. God created Adam from the dust of the ground, and he breathed into him the breath of life. This is where man became a living soul, as it said, when God breathes life into him. God placed Adam in a garden called the Garden of Eden, and he gave him a job, which was to dress and to keep the garden. And God gave Adam a law that he was not to eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. There was all these trees in the garden, and Adam was free to eat of any of those trees, but there was one tree that he was told that he was not supposed to eat, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And then God saw that it was not good for Adam to be alone, so he made him a companion out of Adam's ribs. What was his companion's name? What was his wife's name? What was it? Eve. Eve, very good. So God made Eve out of Adam's rib. He performed surgery on Adam. You know, today, when we, people get surgery, they, they give him anesthesia, and they put him to sleep, and then they cut him open and do the business, and then they sew him back up. Well, God put Adam to sleep, gave him some anesthesia, he cut him open, he took a rib out, and he made himself a woman. Now Genesis 3 then records what is called the fall of man. So this is very this is would be something that is essential to understand in the Bible because the fall of man is the reason why the rest of the Bible has to even be here. If the fall of man never happened, there wouldn't be a Bible. There'd be no point of having a Bible. There'd be no point of having a savior, Jesus come. There would be um, no a whole myriad of laws of God that he's given us and all these things none of this stuff would be necessary if it wasn't for the fall of man. We'd still be in the garden. We'd still be in the garden. Amen. We'd be living forever. Mm-hmm. So during the creation, God created millions of angels, um, which are spiritual beings that are God's helpers. Now, this is not actually recorded in Genesis. This is recorded elsewhere in the Bible. You can We can derive this. But chronologically, the creation of the angels would have happened, I believe, before God created the earth. It would have been the first, one of the first things that God, probably the first thing that God created. And the reason for that is, turn with me to Job 38. I do not believe that the angels were created at any time after the earth itself was created. Job 38 And um, I think it's verse um, 5 through 7, yeah. Yeah. Let's start with verse 4. Job 38, 4. Where was thou when I laid the foundations of the earth? Declare if thou hast understanding. Who hath laid the measures thereof, if thou knowest? Or who hath stretched the line upon it? Whereupon are the foundations thereof fastened, or who laid the cornerstone thereof? When the morning stars sang, for, sang together, and all the sons of God shouted for joy. So the sons of God there are speaking of the angels. They're sons of God by creation. Just like Adam was called the son of God. Adam was created by God, and therefore he's called the son of God. The angels likewise are called the sons of God. Who else would be singing while God laid the foundation of the earth. There was clearly no men around when God laid the foundation of the earth. Speaking of the angels, well, if, they're, if they are shouting and singing when God laid the foundation of the earth, that means they were there when God laid the foundation of the earth. So this, like I said, this information is not in Genesis. We have to find that other places. Now, the highest of the angels was an angel named Lucifer, and he decided that he wanted to be like God, and he led a rebellion to try to usurp God's place, in which he and one-third of the angels were cast out of heaven, and they've been at war with God and with his chosen people ever since. So Lucifer, after that point, became Satan, called the devil. This, likewise, is not found in Genesis. It's found in other places, uh, in Isaiah 14, and or is it 12, 12 or 14? And 14, Isaiah 14 and Ezekiel 28. So when Lucifer fell, he took a third of the angels with him. We're told that in, in the book of Revelation, in Revelation 12. And at that point, he, be called, he became called Satan or the devil. 
or the great dragon, these many names that he goes by. So the devil came to Eve in the form of a serpent, and he deceived her into eating the fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. This happened in the very beginning. Um, Satan was trying to get man to fall. He was trying to destroy man, and, and this is what he ended up doing by first tempting the woman. Now, God had told Adam that he would die in that day, that he ate the fruit, and so he did die. He died spiritually immediately that day. There was a change that came over Adam. Adam was in um, communion with God before that time, and after that time, he starts blaming God. He starts blaming his wife. He starts hiding from God. He, he has yeah. a, a change comes over Adam at that time. Because of that, God cursed the ground for Adam's sake. And he cursed Eve with painful childbirth and increased conceptions, and he banished them both from the Garden of Eden. So man was in this beautiful garden and would have been there for all for the rest of time, but they screwed up and they got thrown out of it. And you want to know why we have misery and pain and sickness and all the problems that we have today? It goes back to the first man and woman sinning especially the first man. And that sinful nature was passed down to all of us. Mm -hmm. Now God at that time prophesied that there would be a coming seed that would come, the seed of the woman. And the seed of the woman was said that he would crush the serpent's head. The serpent and the seed of the woman would be enmity. They'd be enemies of each other. The serpent would bruise his heel and the seed of the woman would crush the serpent's head. This was a prophecy of Jesus Christ right. who would later come many, many years, about 4,000 years later, and he would ultimately destroy Satan, the devil. Genesis 4 then records the birth of Cain and Abel. Abel offered a sacrifice to God that was acceptable. It was a lamb of the flock, a blood sacrifice. Cain, on the other hand, offered a fruit basket to God and the fruit of the ground, and God did not accept Cain's offering, he accepted Abel's offering. And so, what did Cain do? He killed the competition. Figures, well, I'm not going to have anybody to make me look bad anymore if Abel's not around. So Cain kills Abel, and so is the story of world history. This is, the, this is what happens. This is why we have murders, and this is why we have envy, and things like that. We see, the very, we see it typified there in the very beginning. Genesis 5 records all the generations from Adam to a man named Noah. And we'll talk about Noah in a little bit. There was about 1,600 and some years there from Adam up until Noah. And then comes a flood. But we'll, I'm not, we'll talk about that in just a second. Actually, we'll talk about that right now. Genesis 6 through 9 records how God destroyed the earth with a global flood. The earth had become wicked, full of violence, and God decides that he's tired of it. He's going to destroy every man on the earth except for Noah and seven of his family members. Noah, his wife, his three sons, and their three wives. So there'd be eight people that God would leave on the earth to repopulate the earth, and he would destroy the rest of it. He told Noah to create, to make a big boat called an ark. And on this ark, Noah's family would stay and pairs of every animal, excuse me, every animal, pairs of every animal would go on the ark. Um, there are some types of animals, clean animals, where there would be seven pairs that would go on. And the rest of them would be just one pair. So God indeed did flood the earth, and he repopulated it with, with Noah's family. It took about 120 years or so to build the ark. It took a long time. The ark was enormous. It would have been uh, larger than a football field. So a great, huge, huge boat three stories inside and with enough animals to repopulate the earth with enough food to feed all the animals they were on the ark for about a year so they were it rained god sent uh, torrential downpours on the earth for 40 days and 40 nights flooded the entire earth genesis 11 records how god scattered the people of the earth and confused their languages when they tried to build a tower who remembers where they tried to build a tower anybody remember that Tower of Babel, that's right. And at the Tower of Babel, God confused their languages. And I would say, though I haven't looked up the etymology of the word, I would say the word, the word babbling comes from Babel. 
Because when somebody's babbling, what are they just rambling on? You can't understand what they're saying. You know, well, that was what it would have been like at Babel when God confused all their languages, and all of a sudden they can't understand each other. And people naturally will gravitate to people that can understand their language. So this is where the nations of the earth came from. Because if everybody speaks one language, you have one nation. If you people can't understand each other, then you start having people going to different areas and hanging out with people that can talk like they talk. Mm -hmm. And so this is where we get nations, and eventually we get different people going to different areas of the world, and they have different um, characteristics that come out. Maybe some of them um, are more suited for warm climates or they're not affected by the sun as much and they migrate to warmer climates to um, tr more tropical climates and this is where you get different races quote unquote of people so the Tower of Babel really explains where languages came from it explains where the different quote races of people come from and a lot of a lot of things are explained here in the book of Genesis of course the flood gives us the whole fossil record because with the flood all these animals were buried under all this sediment and rocks and um, dirt um, and that's where all the fossils came from and so the book of Genesis really explains human history to us so that's about 1500 years in the first 11 chapters or yeah yep in the first actually in the first um, Six. the first n nine chapters up to um, really beginning with about, yeah, by Genesis 9, once Noah gets off the ark, it had, already, it had been 1,656 years, I think. It was 1,656 years until the flood. The Tower of Babel came after the ark. Yeah, yes, yeah. And is there anything to Ham, Japheth, and um, Noah's third son? Shem. 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 Ham and mm -hmm. Japheth. I know that Semite comes somehow etymologically from Shem. From Shem, yeah. Is there any racial lineage? I know that the races were formed by the nations and the language groups at the Tower mm. of Babel. Is it, have you heard anything, or do you think there's anything to Shem, Japheth, and Ham being three different racial groups or bringing forth three different types of people? Yeah, I, I'm not sure. I, I've heard something like that, but I, I don't. I don't know enough about that to really say. But, but Semitic is descended of Shem. That's like that's that. definitely true. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Which are Jews and Arabs, for that matter. Yes. You know, so it's kind of funny. People, if you if you say something against the Jews, you're anti-Semitic. But the the Arabs are Semites too. They're all descendants. You know, that's whether right. they come from Isaac or Ishmael, you know, they're all come from Shem. So a Jew that hates an Arab is anti-Semitic. Yes. <laughs> you know. Yes. So go figure. And if you hate a Khazar Jew, you're not anti-Semitic. No, 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 exactly. Genesis 12 through 25 records how God called a man named Abram from a place called Ur of the Chaldees and made a promise to him that he would be a father of many nations when he was 75 years old and still childless. So this is the next major step in biblical history was when God called Abram. Now, Ur of the Chaldees would be in modern-day Iraq. The Chaldees were the Babylonians. Babylon is modern-day Baghdad, or close to it anyway. So this takes up a lot of the book of Genesis, uh, a good chunk of it. And Abraham then is the basis for the Christian faith. He's the father of our faith, and Jesus Christ eventually is a descendant, comes from Abraham. God cha changed Abram's name to... Anybody know? What did God change Abram's name to? Abraham. Abraham, very good. And what was Abram's wife's name? Anybody remember? Sarai. 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 Sarai was Abram's wife's name. And then what was Sarai's name changed to? Sarah, yeah, very good. So God gave them a promised child. What was the promised child's name? Anybody? Abraham and Sarah's child. Begins with an I. Isaiah? No, close. Anybody know? Isaac, yes. Isaac was the promised child. Who was their first child, though? Isn't it Ishmael? 
Ishmael. Ishmael came about because Abraham and Sarah didn't want to wait on God. God had promised them a promised seed, and a long time goes by, like 25 years, if I'm remembering right. And they think, well, apparently God must have meant for us to be a little bit um, inventive here and come up with some other idea. So Sarah gave Abraham her handmaid, and her name was Hagar, and Abraham has a little fling with Hagar, and out comes Ishmael. But Ishmael was not the promised child, and right. Abraham and Sarah did end up having a child. Abraham was 100 years old. Sarah was 90 whenever they had Isaac. God promised to make Abraham's seed as numerous as the stars of heaven, and that he would be a father of many nations. Now, Abraham's seed, this promise, was actually made to Jesus Christ. Matty. Um, Jesus Christ. Sure. Um, men and women back then lived a lot longer. Yes. But did women still run the same childbearing ages as they do now, do you think? Or do you think they have longer periods? Um, I don't know them? for sure, but Sarah was barren when she was 70. I think she was 70. No, no, no. She would have been 65. Abraham was 75. She was 10 years younger. She would have been 65. So I would think, I don't know, maybe a little bit longer, but I, I don't think, I mean, they weren't normally bearing children into their, you know, hundreds or something like that. That wouldn't have been normal because Sarah's... Wo- I, I don't, yeah, I don't know about how... Yeah, yeah men could, men could, yeah, I think so. She had the uh, eight sons of Keturah or seven sons right. of Keturah. Now, the thing is, Abraham was said that he was as good as dead, too. So the Lord um, revived his generative power. Yes. Um, so, yeah, he did have sons right. way up. A hundred and, he lived to be 175 years old. But normally speaking, I'm not sure. Uh, I don't know about that. Maybe back before the flood, you know, people had children. Well, for instance, Adam would have been 130 years old when he had Seth. So before the flood, yeah, and obviously Eve would have been 130 years old too. Mm-hmm. They were the so same age. So before the flood, they probably had longer. Y- yes, they, yeah, they, they would have. Um, after after, the, after flood, the flood, man's lifespan started to shorten, and with that, uh, their childbearing years, I assume, would have shortened to something similar to what we have now. Yeah. Uh, Pastor, so, Ab- so back then, people, it wasn't just Abraham and Sarah specific, but people did normally live longer. Well, people lived somewhat longer in Abraham's day. Um, I'm trying to think how old. I don't remember exactly how old Isaac was, but he was over 100 years old. Even Moses was 120 years old. Joshua was 110, I think. So there were people, it was sort of like once the flood, after the flood happened, whatever changed, whether it was atmospheric pressure or oxygen levels or something changed, and it wasn't just a, a light switch where people went from living 900 years to 70. It's it started to slowly happen okay. um, until, well, definitely Solomon said, no, um, it says in the Psalms that man's days were 70 years, 80 years by reason of strength. So, but I mean that would have been um, like a thousand BC or something. So that would have been, you know, quite a quite a ways after the flood until okay. that time. It's just that, you know, you always hear about, you know, like especially with the pharaohs where they'd have to get married at age seven because their life expectancy was so low and stuff like that. And I was just wondering, do you even agree with that, that people, because a lot of people I, say no, they lived up to 50 if they were even healthy and stuff like that. Yeah, I don't, I don't really believe that. I think what, they, what they're taking is the, the average and not the mean. And so the average age, if you have a lot of infant mortality, if you average in 25% of people die at zero and the other ones die at 70, you're going to have you know, a, a lot lower life expectancy. So granted, I mean, there were people that got sick and died a lot. You know, we get an infection today, we take an antibiotic, they get an infection back then, they die. So I mean, there were definitely people that would have died early, but you read of a lot of people in, in the old days that lived up into their 70s oh, and yeah. 80s and... Oh, yeah. So yeah, I don't really, I don't buy that your average guy is just going to drop off at 40, 50 years old. I don't, I don't yeah. believe that. Sort no. of 
feeds a idea that medical technology has really extended our lifespan. When yeah. Psalm says, yeah. you know, three score and ten, yeah. you're doing good, and that's yeah. pretty much the same today. It is. It's. I think average lifespan is up in the mid 70s now, but still, with all the technology we have, and we've managed to add five or six years at most, mm -hmm. you know, to what the Bible said 3,000 years ago was the age of man. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I don't. I don't buy a lot of that stuff. Well, a lot of the old ones live in Asiatic countries, though, too, where they don't have a lot of medicine. Right. That's where you find most of your over 100 today. Yeah. Not in Western medicine centers. Right. Yeah. But out in the, in the hills and mountains. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and the Japanese live a long time. Yeah, go ahead. What's your question, Caleb? Pastor, why do people like doing Christmas? Why? Well, because it's, it's a lot of fun. They like getting together with the family, and everybody likes getting presents, and it's fun. But what they don't realize it is that it's devil worship. So devil worship might be fun, but it's wrong, and so that's why we don't do it. So with Abraham, the promise was made to him that his seed, uh, promise was made to Abraham and his seed, his seed would be as many, as numerous as the stars of heaven. And that promise really harkens to Jesus Christ many, many hundreds and thousands of years later, and in Jesus Christ, all of Abraham's descendants would be as many as the stars of heaven because God would choose them in Christ and Christ would die for them and redeem them. But we're getting way ahead of ourselves, so we'll get there someday. So there was a seed promise back in Genesis 3 or 4. Yes, Genesis 3. And now 3. we have another seed promise here. Yes. And really all of that accumulates in Christ. Yes, that's right. Yep. So then Genesis 25 through 27 records how Isaac had two sons. Who were Isaac's two sons? Anybody remember? They were twins. Uh, I can't remember. One of them started with a J. That's yeah. right, yes. Um, J. Jacob. Jacob. There you go. And then the other one was the one that God hated. Which That's was, right. Uh, it, was, the e. it, was, it was, yeah, I knew that. E. Esau. Esau, very good. very good. Jacob and Esau. And then Esau ended up selling his birthright to Jacob for a mess of pottage, for some soup. Esau's out there hunting one day. He comes back and he's really hungry. Jacob's a mama's boy in there in the kitchen yep. cooking up some soup. And Esau says, give me some soup. And Jacob's like, no, nah, I'm not giving you any soup. Just sell me your birthright. I'll give you some soup. Esau says, well, what good is this birthright going to do me? I'm going to die here in five minutes anyway. So give me the soup. I'll give you the birthright. Well, he lost his birthright to Jacob. And then later, he lost his blessing yeah, to Jacob yeah. as well. He, Jacob's father Isaac was going to give the blessing to the firstborn, because Esau was the firstborn. And Jacob's mother, Rachel, no, that was his wife, Jacob's mother, uh, Rebecca, came up with this plan that she would make Jacob look like Esau and dress him up and put some hairy clothes on him, because Esau was a hairy man, and make him smell like the field and so he and she made him some good venison like like Isaac liked and Jacob goes to Isaac and Isaac is pretty well blind he doesn't realize what's going on and he the voice sounds like he, like Jacob but uh, he smells and feels like Esau so he gives him the blessing and then along comes old Esau uh, got the venison out hunting and goes to bring it to his dad and his dad says I'm sorry I already gave the blessing to Jacob. Of course, Esau was angry about this, and Jacob has to flee for his life, and so on. Jacob was a no. prick. He was, yeah. He was a, what well, his name means, supplanter. Does you know? it? So, yeah. Wow. Yeah. So, yeah, he, um, and then his name was changed to Israel, which we'll get to here in just a second. So it, from the time he was born, basically, he was the one they were wrestling, you know, wrestling in the womb, and he, he managed to come out first. Um, was that him or was that uh, Ephraim and Manasseh? He grabbed the heel. I think it was the other ones. Um, Manasseh, was it um, Ephraim and Manasseh, Manasseh I think. Yeah. yeah, they, one came out first and they tied the string around his finger. Oh, yeah. He came, you know, and yeah. so anyway. But yeah, Jacob grabbed his heel. That's right, yeah. So Genesis 28 through 36 records how Jacob had 12 sons. And these 12 sons are called the 12 patriarchs of Israel. I would 
quiz you on what they all were, but I wouldn't remember them all myself. So I remember a few of them, like yeah. Judah, yeah. Reuben, Issachar, Dan, Simeon. Uh, Simeon, Levi, that's a half of them. Benjamin, right? Benjamin, Joseph, Manasseh, Manasseh, or was Man no Manasseh was Joseph's son. Manasseh ended up replacing Ephraim and Manasseh got jo Split. Joseph's yes. inheritance. Yes, sir. He picked them up. Yeah. Right at eight. Uh, Asher. Wow, good one. Really good. Zebulun. 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 Yep. That's ten. Yeah, I can't remember. That's not bad though. That's all. That's probably an A or a B. What were the two tribes in the southern Israel? Were there three tribes? Benjamin or uh, well, um, we were close. You guys were close, actually. We. Yeah. I was counting. I felt like I was close. So that was close. Ten. We can get the rest of them later. We can. We could look it up, but. Okay. So Jacob was renamed what? I just mentioned it. Uh, Israel. Israel. Jacob was renamed Israel. What does Israel mean? Anybody remember? It means a prince. He's a prince with God and man. This is where the name of the people of Israel comes from. They were named after Jacob or after Israel. And this is why in the Bible, the nation of Israel will sometimes be called Jacob or it's a lot of times called Israel. Sometimes it's called Ephraim too. Um, Israel, because Ephraim was one of the Joseph's two sons, and the the nation, at least the, I think it was the northern nation, ended up being called Ephraim. We'll get into the the split of the nation here later at some point. So um, Jacob's twelve sons end up becoming the head of the twelve tribes of Israel, and you'll read e into the New Testament even of the twelve tribes of Israel. And whenever they went into the Promised Land, which we'll get to later, the 12 tribes each got a section of the land that they would inherit, and that would be their, their land where their families would dwell. Now, Genesis 37 through 50 then records the story of Jacob's favorite son. Who was his favorite son? Joseph. Joseph, you're right. So Joseph's brother, so there were, Joseph had 11 brothers, right? There were 12 sons of Jacob. Joseph's brothers hated him. Oh, I, did I mention Reuben? I think I did get Reuben. Did get Reuben. Okay, I got Reuben. Okay. I thought maybe I was going to get the 11th one. <laughs> so Joseph's brothers hated him, and they sold him into slavery into Egypt. Who remembers why they hated him? Coat of many colors. Just right. His father. Yep. His father loved him, gave him this coat of many colors, Joseph had a couple of dreams, which didn't really help him out too oh, much. Yeah. Right. He said, oh, guys, by the way, I had this dream. There was a sun, moon, and 11 stars, and then the sun and moon started worshiping, and the stars started worshiping me. And they're like, huh, wonder what that might mean. You know? <laughs> I had this other dream. There was these sheaves, like 11 sheaves, and they were all bowing down over this one sheaf. You know? And they're like, okay, we're going to kill you now. <laughs> so Joseph went out to check on his brothers. They were out in the field, and they see him coming. And they say, all right, let's kill him. You know, we're going to get rid of this guy. And they come up with a story. And they, they were going to kill him. And then Reuben talked them into not killing them, killing him. So they didn't kill him. They threw him in a pit. But then the Ishmaelites come by. And they think, well, what good is he doing in the pit? We can at least make some money off of him. So they bring him up out of the pit, sell him to the Ishmaelites. Ishmaelites end up taking him to Egypt. And then they take the coat of many colors. And they slay a beast and dip it in the blood. And they bring it back to their dad and say, hey, we found this coat. You think this is Joseph's? Well, of course it was, and so he thinks Joseph's dead, and and it's the poor guy had his heart. Yeah, great, great guys, huh? That's you know when when God chose Israel, it wasn't because they were good people, right? right? No and and that's a picture of us. all of us. That's right. God did not choose any of us because we were good people. Right. He chose us just because we were the opposite. Now we do know that Jacob loved Joseph. One of the main reasons, too, because of the wife that had him right. was his yep. favorite. Yeah, because his wife yeah, it was Rachel. Didn't she? Yep. Didn't they have two children? Yep, they had ben ben Benjamin. Yep, she died having Benjamin. Yes. Yep. Okay. So Benjamin became his new favorite once 
um, Joseph was thought to be gone. My wife has pulled a romance novel out of Genesis. I'm yeah. impressed. You've got yeah. those details yeah. down to a science. There, it, it kind of was a romance novel. With, you know, when Jacob, and I didn't mention this, but Jacob, he went to get himself a wife, and he went to Laban, yes. which was his uncle. His yeah. uncle. His another uncle. Nice yeah, another, another shyster. Jacob deserved Laban. Laban deserved Jacob. But, yep. but um, J- Jacob worked seven years. For Rachel, he likes Rachel. She's the younger one. He ends up getting Leah after after working for seven years, and then so after the, having that fast one pulled on him, then he um, asked Laban, like you know what 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 the heck? I worked for Rachel. You gave me Leah. Well, I can't give you the younger one first, you know. So work just work another seven years, and I'll give you Rachel too. So he, poor guy worked fourteen years, ended up getting two wives. But don't feel too oh. bad because in order to get out of there. He shystered his father-in-law. Oh yeah, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. The the two of them. I mean, they were, they were just the odd couple there. They were made for each other. Like painted some caps no. or he, something. He yeah. fed him water yeah. that had stuff that would make them. Yeah, it was just yeah. And they're speckled because yeah. he could take them with. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So he took all Laban's yeah. kids with the yeah. with the two daughters. Yep. Yeah. And the two daughters took his gods along whenever yeah. they when they took off too. Unbelievable. Yeah. So Joseph ends up down in Egypt. Ends up with the Ish- getting sold by the Ishmaelites, goes into Egypt, and in Egypt he ends up being a servant of a man named Potiphar, and Potiphar he does such a good job that Potiphar makes him the head of his house, and then Potiphar's wife takes a liking to Joseph, and she wants Joseph to lay with her. Joseph won't do it because he's a good man, so he runs away, and she has his garment, his coat, and she tells Potiphar, "Hey, you know, this." This Jew that you had here, um, he tried to rape me, and I, he, I got his garment, and he ran away, and which, of course, wasn't true. And so then Joseph gets put into prison. And Joseph does so, he's so diligent, he does such a good job in the prison that he ends up becoming the head of the prison. And then uh, the butler and the baker of the pharaoh tick off the pharaoh one day, so they get thrown into prison. So they're in prison, and they have some dreams. And... Um, Joseph interprets the dreams, and he tells, I forget which one, I think the baker, I for, now I forget which one. Anyway, the, baker's gonna die. Yep. the baker well, died. Yeah, the baker died. Get butler got promoted. And when the, so Joseph tells the butler, hey, whenever you get out of here, remember me. Well, the butler doesn't remember him. Right. So then Pharaoh has a dream, and he has this dream that there's um, these seven sickly looking cows and seven fat cows and the fat cows eat the sickly looking ones and there's seven stalks of corn and uh, with sickly looking ones and then the good look, fat stalks of corn and the fat ones eat the eat the sickly looking ones and so this is dreams troubles him so all of a sudden then the butler recovers from his amnesia and says oh yeah there's this guy in prison he knows how to tell dreams i forgot about him so joseph gets cleaned up goes out to pharaoh he interprets pharaoh's dream there's going to be seven years of famine. There's going to be seven years of feast, where plenty, and then there's going to be seven years of famine. So Pharaoh, he's impressed by this, so he makes Joseph the, the uh, prime minister of the land of Egypt, puts him in charge of everything, and then Joseph, being wise, he saves up all that corn that they had in the seven years of plenty and built all these granaries or whatever, and saves it all up, and then whenever the seven years of famine come, then he starts, then he can feed the people of Egypt. This turned out to be very advantageous for the king of Egypt because people start coming and he's, you know, they're paying for the corn and eventually he gets all the money and then he takes all their land and he makes them bond servants. And, and so then the, the famine was so bad, it was all over the place, not just in Egypt, but the whole way up into the land of Canaan where Joseph's people were from, where his father Jacob and his brothers were from, so Jacob sends his kids down to Egypt to get some corn. They go down to Egypt, and they come to Joseph, the prime minister. They don't recognize him. It's been a long time. Right, and, right. and, yeah, all of a sudden the dreams come true. You know, they're bowing down to him, and, you know. So the dream, Joseph really had legitimate dreams. Right. And um, so, long story short, Joseph ends up messing with them a little bit, doesn't tell them who he is. He sends them back with grain, but he puts the money back in their bags and then accuses them of stealing the money and makes them leave Benjamin with them. 
and they go back and tell their father and their father's distraught and so the father ends up going to Egypt they bring the father back bring um, Jacob back and, and the whole family comes into Egypt about 70 people and uh, they're given a place to live in the land of Goshen they're in Egypt and they end up multiplying there and eventually turn into a great nation they end up living there for about 200 years and things go pretty well 